Hey, John. Come here a minute. It tells me I got to close unused applications. It'll do it on. There's no unused applications running. That's all right. Just leave it as she is. Not this much. Just leave it as she is. Just hit where the X is. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm not used to doing this upside down. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Okay, go ahead and take it from there. You're live. Your frame rate is too low.
let us confess our sins against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Our opening gift today is we praise you, O God. It's number 87.
first reading is from excuse me, Jeremiah 17. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a plant, tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now sing responsibly Psalm 1.
according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place. With a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him and to be healed of their disease. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. And woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Please be well, Luke certainly has a way of turning things upside down. And this is no surprise, since Jesus himself was turning the world upside down. And this isn't new, it's been happening since the creation. A good portion of what we see in the relationship between the Father and Jesus. And this chosen people, Israel, is a bit backwards. God leads them out of Egypt, out of slavery. Israel makes a gold idol to worship, denying God to save them. Israel cuts for Samuel for an earthly king. We want a king. God responds for Samuel, you, you don't need a king. You have me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we want a king. We want to be like other nations. God through Samuel again. You don't need a king. You, you got me. Yeah, but that's nice. But we still want a king, a leader. And God granted them a king. And for those that have read the book of Kings, you know some of them are good, but most of them are pretty awful. And it's the first time ever that you'll hear the words, it's not you, it's me. Because God said that through Samuel. It's not you to reject it, it's me. For a nation wanting to hear from God, Israel continued to torment and martyr most of its messengers to prophets. Now I'm sure the first hearers of Luke were stunned as the apostles and the crowd were on that plane where Jesus taught. In an honor well society, a culture driven in that first century where power was kin to wealth. This would have seemed wrong. Because they are the rich, just got richer. The powerful remained in power. And the people cried, when will this world turn upside down? These hearers would have seen the second destruction of the temple with invasion and Israel scattered to the known world. And yet they cried, when will, Lord, when will this all come to pass? Now we have an advantage. We know the path that Jesus walked, one that led to his death for our sins, and a reward won for us in his resurrection. In Luke, we see the rich, or he speak, Jesus speaks of the rich. Who were those rich in Jesus' time? Now, their definition isn't exactly the same as ours. The Pharisees, the landowners, the Romans absolutely were rich, but the rich were, as I like to say, the rich in heart included to those that just acted just like they did. The pursuit of earthly treasures and possession, they sought after a chase more than the will of God. Here Jesus is addressing more than the temple leadership and those in power, but those whose hearts were committed to that standard of power, knowledge, and strength. Jesus is commenting on the inability of the wealthy to let go of this world to be a child of God. 
in first century Jerusalem, because of that society, wealthy were honored and said, well, <laughs> they must have known some, or they're blessed with knowledge of good luck. So in that lens, who are the poor? Who are the hungry and who are the weeping? Who are the poor in heart? Those who live in a struggle, those who yearn for food and justice, but were denied this because of their position in class. Or maybe it was those who went to the temple seeking God, seeking to praise and glorify Him and to hear His word, or to sacrifice for a need turned away because their offering, they themselves, and all they had wasn't enough. If you take this lens and look through it today, are we rich or are we poor? Too many times again the pursuit of wealth, possession, better accommodation, better everything is a driving force in this society. Increase our land. Get us a bigger house. We need more toys, hoarding food and medicine, and we win, right? Those with the most toys win. Isn't that the same? Well, what exactly do you win? Defining the rich and poor these days isn't so cut and dry. Because someone with little money but minds from obtaining some more or only to increase their position in the world and in society would be an example of Again, someone who had wealth, but shared it appropriately and treated it as a blessing to be shared and not one to be withheld for those who needed help would, by this example, be poor. Again, it's not the accumulation of wealth that is the problem, but the attitude we present to God and others because of it. And be careful. Because the rich and poor that you may think are Lest we become as the temple leaders of that time. Proud, callous, uninvited, showing that you're a superior I mean, we know today's gospel is as the Beatitudes, or as I like to say, the be attitudes of Christian life. What we are to aspire to, the attitudes that we should be carrying with us as we face the world. And the dollar amount in our pockets and bank accounts do have some effect on how we perceive the world. I mean, the higher we go here, the harder it is to see below. Our nose is in the air. Somehow miss the people we have here. Our eyes focus only on those that are right in our sight. We feel we fail to see the poor in spirit, the ones hungry for food and justice. Do we think maybe then, because we have it right here, that we have it there? Honestly, have you ever seen anyone who has passed from this life to the next take all the earned and possessed with them? We must let go of this world to embrace heaven. And to look down as he looks down on all his people, not in scorn or superiority, but with love, compassion, companionship, and grace. We're glad to be poor, glad to know hunger, to know scorn, and to know pain. We rejoice that the world looks, us as, looks at us as unusual, odd, uh, and out of place. We celebrate our pain knowing it is for a greater thing in heaven than what we would ever know here on earth. Our suffering because of being lowly marks us as things. His cross is ours to bear in this world through the tough times. For our pain here is minute, small, in comparison to the Pain Jesus felt to set us free. We share this with his children because he is, they are his children. And by sharing what is ours with others, no matter how big or small, we act as he did, feeding the hungry, comforting the sick and dying, standing for something greater than this world so that others may find comfort. What a joy, what a blessing it is to be wanting and needing God to intercede. I mean, if you never knew hunger, how would you ever understand that God fills us? If we never thirsted, would we ever be saved by the everlasting waters of baptism? It's for that need, that want, that 
God fills us. If we never recognize or experience injustice just because of being a Christian, our focus on this life, the promises given to us, the followers of the Lamb, would be ever phantom or fathom the grace and joy only God could give. We experience this and share our lives with others, sharing and making our pain, their pain, ours to comfort, their thirst and hunger, ours as well. Their injustice are sharing the burden and finding justice. Their loneliness gone because of our companionship. For the least of all these, what we do, we do for Jesus. We do for the Father in heaven who lives within both the receiver and the giver. We show that the family of God is not an exclusive club, but we're all the same, but a family with differences and wants, needs, abilities, and resources. Yeah, sometimes our family can be a bit dysfunctional, a bit odd, a bit buggy, maybe just a bit crazy, as we oppose what the world we're living in finds important. But faith, Christendom, has always opposed the world from Jesus and the apostles down to hear us now. We cannot be like Israel. We cannot ignore him. Our love unconditionally, unconditional and undying, much like his, keeps us together as one. We need to go forth and share that love. Turn the world around with just a hug. Break the chains with a word. Show Christ our salvation. Forgiveness and road to the Father to those who honor Him. We need to reach out to people with open doors, not closed ones. We need to change. If we want to change, yet we cannot reject that change. Growth is hard. Sometimes it's painful. But we have the Father beside us to do that and to be with us every step of the way. Amen. Amen.
The Spirit of the Lord was poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen faith to those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, be continued blessing into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has been eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern. That they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that channel society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings and mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer, especially Paul Anderson, Bonnie Anderson, Linda Lamborn, Alex Nemeth, Roger Alexis, Ron Spencer, Dave Mays, Gigi Carroll, Patty Sifrin, Mary Delaney, Patricia Walt, Doris Vega, Debbie Shirk, Larry Shine, Holly Bonardi, Todd Erickson, Cindy Soley, Gregory Wagner, Lois Schultz, Joyce Maxwell, Marlene Kiowski, Steve Cadaverro, Robbie Swin, Joanne Bergerson, Bishop Lozano, Lori Marcella, Lou Montai, Betty Frelly, Margaret Pasek, Kim Little Robinson, Andy and Pam Lloyd, Family and friends of Brady Wholesaler and anyone we name. Mary Lou, Sherry Dave Sterner, Craig Fisher, John Wicked. God of grace. We do this congregation our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future. You are preparing. Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us today as we, as a congregation, meet decide to vote, to hear where, where we hopefully hear from you where our path is to be. Be with all of us today. May logic and peace and strength guide our conversation. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Since we have great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these in all of our prayers to you and through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Yeah,
disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. We are given assurance of our Lord's presence through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you this same bread of life and this same cup of blessing, that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy holy God, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to look us to evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ grant to you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.